some problems in education. So first I'll tell you what I think the problems are, and then I'll tell you why I think this is the community to fix them, because all of you are actually already in the business of education. Okay, so some statistics that you may know already. Uh, the high school dropout rate in this country hovers at about 30% for black, Latino, and Native American youth. It's a staggering 50%. This is not okay. It's a huge indicator of um, academic disengagement. Another data point, our digital youth study that I did with a great team of researchers, including Dana, we found that young people were going online to do a ton of learning, and that was awesome. But we also found that it was only a small minority of kids, probably less than 10%, that were really taking to the online resources to do learning that was highly engaged and oriented to academic, civic, uh, and career opportunity. So what we have here is a problem of a disconnect, a gap, between the kinds of things that kids are really socially engaged with and interested in, in terms of their online activity, and what adults and parents want kids to be interested in, which is the academic stuff, the civic and political engagement, and things that open doors to economic opportunity. That's the problem. We're hearing a lot more talk about the economic opportunity side of things and economic privilege and the 1%. We need to be talking about educational opportunity and who the educational and learning elites are in this country. And I think the way to do that is to start by reflecting on our own practices. We are the learning elites of the digital age. We are the 1% who really know how to mobilize the internet in order to activate our knowledge, our expertise, and develop professional identities through the use of these new tools. Here's a kid who I interviewed as part of the digital use study who's also part of the learning elite, the 1%. So he's a web comics creator. Uh, he learned how to do web comics when he was in college, but not because he had any classes at school. He didn't even have any friends in college who shared this interest, but he really took to the online world in order to connect with others who share that interest and learn how to get really good at this. Now, if you look at the dynamic of how he did this, he started first by discovering web comics on his own, and he fell in love with it, so it started with a personal passion and affinity. But then he went to the online world. Uh, he started looking at online tutorials and how-tos uh, to figure out how to make a web page, to how, how to use digital tools to make web comics. And he connected with a community of interest that really supported his learning and expertise development in the space. And what made Dave different from almost all of the other kids that we interviewed in our study was that he was able to take that interest and expertise and advocate for its relevance and sites of power that mattered for his professional identity. He was able to market, he was able to create a successful website, and eventually a professional identity and a sustainable career as a web developer. Now the experience that Dave had is an experience that a lot of us in this room have had, of going onto the internet to find specialized knowledge, to further our expertise, to connect with other geeky people who share that specialized interest, and we use the internet to disseminate our work, to become public about our work, to develop professional identities that tie our personal passions into sustainable careers. This is the experience that more, more kids deserve to have, and they're not having it right now. So what do we need to do to guide kids towards these experiences in an era in which the internet has radically reduced the barriers of access to knowledge and expertise, kids are not finding it yet. Um, and so we actually need you. <laughs> and this is where it's important to recognize the fact that every social media platform is a learning platform, is an education platform. You are all in the business of education already, regardless of whether you self-identify as an educator. So here are some ways in which social media can further the cause of connected learning. Build social infrastructure around online educational resources. You all know that it's not just content, it's social connection that drives engagement and drives learning. Secondly, Platforms that help kids connect around interests and expertise and knowledge, especially intergenerational ones, so they don't have to depend on their peer group at school, they don't have to depend on schools to deliver their interests. Thirdly, reputation systems that reward being smart, getting really good at something, being intellectual, civic engagement, rather than systems that only reward attention and popularity. Incredibly important. Just some examples of ways in which social media can help expand educational opportunity for more kids. So I've been lucky to be part of the MacArthur Foundation's Digital Media and Learning Initiative. Uh, we need a ton of help in realizing a vision of public education in the digital age.
that's really about serving all the kids. Thank you.